up guys it's skill up here with another weekly vendor reset video i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic week first things first let's talk about that controller we talked about giving away two weeks ago the winner is a guy named teves moles i believe don't quote me on that i definitely pronounced that incorrectly he said he's looking forward to everything he's tried on the pts the new dz areas look fantastic and the landmarks are awesome last stand with a little bit of polish is the kind of pvp i love to have in this game the legendary missions are an excellent change and the new incursion is unique and requires a lot of strategy, something that we haven't seen until now. I totally agree with all of those points. Congratulations, my man. You have won a Nacon Revolution Pro controller. I'm going to be sending that out to you straight after this video. And with that out the way, let's get straight into the video. Don't forget there are timestamps in the description below that allow you to jump back and forward as you please. At the weapons vendor in the base of operations, you're going to find a FAMAS. Now, a few things to say about this one. First of all, it's going to be converted to an exotic weapon come patch 1.6. Uh, that means that it's no longer usable with Alpha Bridge. The uh, third talent, Uncomplicated, will stay. It's exactly the same. However, Alpha Bridge will not proc any talents from exotic or named weapons. So don't think this is going to work with Alpha Bridge come patch 1.6 because it will not. As for its role, it's fairly decent. 14k base damage for me. It will be different for you because it scales on firearms. Puts this at sort of mid-tier territory. Same with its enemy armor damage role. Uh, Deadly is a fairly good talent for it. However, it doesn't synergize particularly well given that you're probably not stacking a huge amount of crit on a FAMAS. Um, responsive is great uh, for PvP since most PvP encounters happen at fairly close quarters but if you're using it in pve you're probably going to be looking to keep your distance a little bit more i'd say this weapon is probably missing destructive if you're looking to use it in pve i probably replace responsive with destructive in that context and uh, uncomplicated is baked in you're always going to be stuck with that one at the gear vendor next door there's a very good pair of savage gloves uh it's got 1236 stamina out of a max of 1272 which is a fairly strong roll uh savage as we all know increases crit chance against targets out of cover by 7%, making it one of the most efficient sources of crit in the game. Critical hit damage roll of uh, 16 here is fairly strong, given that it actually maxes out at 17%, uh, and critical hit chance at 5.5% at, uh, is good, given that it maxes out at 6%. The health on kill is what you would replace with your weapon damage of choice. So if you're using these with SMGs, you roll SMGs, assault rifles, etc., uh, making it a fairly, a, well, a very well-rolled pair of Savage Gloves, actually, and I certainly will be picking it up myself. There's also a Sticky Bomb Damage mod here, which rolls 3.5% out of a max of 4%. At the Dark Zone gear vendor this week, you're going to find a uh, Prototype Electronics mod. It's rolled 253 Electronics out of a max of 267, which is a very strong roll, and uh, 2,867 Skill Power out of a max of 3,335 makes this a very, very weak roll on the bonus Skill Power. However, it is one of the better mods that you're going to be able to use in patch 1.6 given that we're not rolling armor in this major attributes area anymore skill power is a very desirable secondary stat there so if you need those sorts of mods then this one will do the trick however as i said be aware that this roll here is definitely on the very very low end of the spectrum there's also a reflex side here which rolls 6.5 percent critical hit chance and four percent critical hit damage this is one of the best mods that you're able to pick up if you're looking to maximize your crit chance at the advanced weaponry vendor this week, the Pecan roll is very, very strong. Uh, my one is running 16.5k per bullet damage. This one is 16.8k. Do be aware though that this has 3% less damage to targets out of cover. So in that regard, it kind of balances itself out. They sort of will do similar damage. But if you haven't already got a very strong Pecan roll, I recommend going there, checking out what the per bullet damage is and seeing if this is an upgrade for you. Similarly, the Cassidy is a very strong roll this week as well. It's rolled 125k per bullet damage for me. Again, that'll be different for you, but it's certainly an upgrade over my existing Cassidy and it has higher stagger. The Cassidy is looking to be quite strong in patch 1.6 when used in conjunction with the Lone Star gear set. So do be ready for that one. There's a tactical org here that's rolled Determined, Adept and Fierce. This is one example of a weapon I think has just rolled with too much crit chance. Uh, SMGs are going to have critical hit chance instead of critical hit damage come patch 1.6 
And uh, yeah, you really don't need both Adept and Fierce on these weapons. And Determa doesn't synergize particularly well with this, given that you're probably not going to be using an SMG if you're stacking lots of electronics high. The Black Market AK-47 has fantastic per bullet damage. It works really well with a Predator's Mark gear set. However, Predator's Mark isn't as strong as it was in patch 1.5 because in 1.6 it's going to be uh, sort of very affected by the changes to bleed resistance that are being implemented however it has self-preserved vicious and focused you would certainly get rid of focused and you'd have a fairly decent sustain based weapon with that self-preserved there there's a surplus svd here which you should absolutely avoid and find the custom l86a2 with a uh, self-preserved and vicious similar to the ak we saw before it has meticulous which is uh not bad with an l86 actually given they have fairly small magazines this can be quite advantageous Advantageous. However, the L86 just doesn't hold a candle to an M4 or an LVOA or pretty much any other type of assault rifle. And for that reason, I'd recommend giving it a miss. At the special equipment vendor this week, uh, we obviously have our named weapons. Uh, we've got the Historian, the Valkyria, and the Liberator. The Liberator damage roll this week is quite solid, so do check that out. See if it's an upgrade for you, especially with 22% enemy armor damage. Uh, these weapons become slightly more expensive come patch 1.6, so buy them up now if you can. Uh, uh, there's a first wave vector here with skilled, vicious, and accurate. I wouldn't recommend picking this one up. Accurate is definitely not required on a vector. They're already stable enough as it is. Uh, vicious, you probably don't need that amount of crit since they're going to come with free crit. And skilled has that very high electronics requirement, which makes it tricky to reach. Um, as for gear this week, I'm just going to scroll through and show you what's available. As I've always said, a lot of this stuff is going to change considerably when uh, patch 1.6 launches, and you'll need to see how the stats are re-rolled for you. Uh, my advice to you at this point is to basically buy what to basically fill your slots so if you need a tactician's authority knee pads buy that don't necessarily look too closely at the rolls because many of these will change first aid self heal at six percent here for prototype performance mod which is actually a max roll on this it's a really nice one to get especially given that if you're not stacking lots of skill power really high come patch 1.6 your heal is going to be a lot less useful than it was before this is going to be a very desirable mod in that uh, in the next patch at this point I really do believe that Massive are messing with us. The blueprints this week are the military M9 pistol and the snub-nosed Rhino pistol as well. Massive, please. We've been waiting for an LVOA or M4 blueprint for a long time. I think it is just about time that we get that. Sadly, it is not this week. We've also got a firearms vest blueprint. We've got uh, knee pads, uh, vertical grip foliage green, which rolls optimal range. The uh, hollow sight tan, which is an optimal range sight. Uh, there's a stamina gear mod blueprint here as well. And there's going to be like an electronics or a firearms one, depending on what you've already purchased. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. It's the lower level items that you probably don't need. At Camp Hudson, at the uh, gear vendor here, there's a prototype performance mod that's rolled for ballistic shield damage damage resilience it's rolled five percent this one here reduces your damage taken when you have your ballistic shield out it doesn't reduce the amount of damage that your shield takes it reduces your damage when you are shot from the side or from behind at the madison's stand safe house we're going to find a uh, firearms mod here it's rolled for 238 firearms out of a maximum of 267 which is a mid-tier roll sort of more on the lower end to be honest uh, and it's also rolled 1600 125 health out of a max of 1869 so again on the lower end of the spectrum if you desperately need a mod like this for patch 1.6 they will come in useful however i think you should hold off as you will be able to do better at the ward safe house you're going to find a holster here it's a, a nimble holster now a lot of people are talking about nimble at the moment in patch 1.6 purely because our heal is less efficient nimble is one of the best ways that you're going to be able to maintain your health when you are playing solo and PvE and even in PvP if you're really careful with the way that you use it. Essentially it heals you for 2% of your max health for every 1 meter when you do one of those cover to cover movements. You know when you're in cover and then you kind of move the reticle around, find a new cover point, hold the space bar or hold the move button, whatever, and then you'll regen the health when you arrive at your destination. Very powerful uh, talent in 1.6. 
This holster has rolled fairly strong across uh, firearms and stamina, a bit on the low side on electronics. It's rolled for protection from elites, which you'll be able to change to something else. If you haven't got a nimble holster, I do recommend picking it up. I think you'll find it very useful when the patch launches. At the East 53rd Street DZ checkpoint, there's a Tyrant Suppressor here. It's rolled a 6.5% crit hit chance out of a max of 8.5%. 4% critical hit damage is a max roll. 6% headshot damage is also a max roll. The best thing about the Tyrant Suppressor is that it fits on the smaller type variant weapons like uh, your small SMGs, your 93R, etc. One of the go-to mods for those smaller type weapons. At the East 46th Street DZ checkpoint, you're going to find Prototype Performance Mod Support Station Range. Uh, this one has rolled for 7% out of a maximum of 7.5. However, in patch 1.6, these are actually going to be halved in terms of their value. Uh, these are still a very important mod though because the support station has received a big nerf in terms of its ideal or optimal range. That's been brought in a lot to keep the ability under control given that Reclaimer is uh, now a much more powerful gear set that many people are going to be running they didn't want this thing to get too out of hand in pvp so it's still a useful mod to stack on and this is a fairly good role for them i do recommend picking up a few of these if you're planning on running the reclaimer gear set at the east 34th street dz checkpoint there is a firearms mod here it's rolled 234 out of 267 which is on the low side and it's rolled one percent critical hit chance which is the only role there's no roll range for that particular stat this is one of the best mods that you can get from a DPS perspective in patch 1.6. If you're looking to go full glass cannon and you don't want to stack on any health, then uh, crit chance is really the only option for you if you're looking to maximize your damage in your mod slots. At the East 31st Street DZ checkpoint, there's another site here. It's a rugged mini reflex site. It's got 7.5% critical hit chance out of a max of 8.5%, 6% headshot damage, which is a max roll, and 5% optimal range, which is no big deal. You should sort of ignore that. I Ideally, this would also have some critical hit damage on it as well. However, if you are looking to stack crit on a specific type of weapon, particularly the smaller type of weapons, which can take this mod, then this is definitely a good one to get. At the West 42nd Street DZ checkpoint, we've got ourselves a lovely MP7. Uh, ignore the critical hit damage because that's going to change the critical hit chance in the patch and it will be randomly rolled so you don't know what you're going to get. 13.1k per bullet damage is solid. Uh, I I'd sort of grade that around mid-tier. It's not particularly strong, it's not weak, it just uh, is what it is. Uh, in terms of the talents, we've got Destructive, Self-Preserved, and Ferocious. So, uh, Destructive, fantastic talent for um, PvE, and also for PvP, even though it's not as valuable in 1.6 because people are running around with a lot less armor. Self-Preserved is one of the best talents that you can take with an SMG because it heals you for every crit. It's extremely powerful in PvE, giving you huge amounts of healing back. And obviously in PvP, you're going to be getting a lot less, but it will help you out-trade your opponent in certain circumstances. And finally, Ferocious is great in the third slot because it typically has a high electronics requirement that most people aren't going to be reaching for. If, however, you wanted to use this in PvP, you'd be rolling something like Unforgiving or Responsive in that third slot, and you'd have yourself a very well-rounded MP7. I would say this is a great weapon for those looking to get back into using an SMG. The uh, MP7 has the highest rate of fire of any SMG, making it a fantastic burst fire DPS weapon. Really good to have one of these in your back pocket for when you need to bring a target down fast. There's also a prototype performance mod here, 2% critical hit chance and that is a max roll there so very nice to pick up very handy for patch 1.6 as well at the west 46th street dz checkpoint there's a prototype performance mod turret damage 3.5 percent out of a max of four percent the turret is still very useful in patch 1.6 even though its values have been nerfed across the board it's still one of the best ways to apply status effects to your target particularly the flame turret at the dz6 safe house we have uh, gear for sale as usual i'm not going to be talking about about the stats on it, I'm just going to be showing you what's available. Have a look through there yourself and see what's going to work for you. And finally, at the DZ2 safe house, the only thing really worth talking about is a rehabilitated mask. It's rolled uh, 1238 electronics, which is a very strong roll out of a max of 1272. It's got uh, skill power, major attribute, which is very handy, and it has the enemy armor damage, minor attribute, which will change in the patch. Regardless, though, it's still a well rolled mask. And that's it, guys. That's the 
weekly vendor reset video out the way. Don't forget uh, patch 1.6 is coming. It's not this week though, which means that it's extremely likely it's going to be released on the 28th of February, which is uh, not this Tuesday, but the following since they do all of their major patch deployments on the Tuesday. You can expect it there barring any major catastrophe. Guys, if you like the video, drop it a like. Don't forget to subscribe for plenty more Division videos. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.